third chair that Carl was willing to do. So I'm going to try to get us on to reorganization of the board. And so I would take nomin and I will skip the first part of the call to order with the reception of the guests, agenda revisions, and public comment, and let the chair go there. Uh, I would also say at this time that uh, you see that Lucy's not here tonight, and Mia needs to get to the sports banquet. So after we do the chair, I would ask for a humble reorganization to let Mia give her student report, and then let her go on to the sports banquet. Okay. Since we're busy tonight. So, if, are there nominations for chair for U32? I would move Carrie Bradley as chair. Second. Are there any other nominations? Carrie, are you going to accept that? I will. I just want everyone to know that I do plan on moving out of East Montpelier this summer, uh, pending the sale of my home. So, uh, if, if that does bear out, I'll have to step down uh, sometime after July, I expect. Thank you. Any, anyone have any issues with that? Okay. Any other nominations? All those in favor of Kari Bradley being chair of the U32 board, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed abstentions. Thank you very much for your service, Kari. Okay. Well, thank you, everybody. Um, so, uh, welcome to our guests. I'm going to move quickly to our student report. Um, I think I'll start with the sports. So winter sports is just wrapping up right now, and girls and boys in Nordic both are D2 state champs, and the boys and girls basketball both made it to the quarterfinals but got out there, and hockey was out in the first round too. And then the eighth grade plays just happened too, um, and we have a lot of green energy right now around the cafeteria just shifted away from Cindy's Classics, and we have salads now. And Half Earth came and presented right before February break. And then just last week, around 90 students walked out of U32 all the way to the State House, where we went to like a little rally thing that was down there. That's really fun. That's the biggest thing happening in 32. You picked the right day to walk downtown. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And it's actually probably a little more than 100 kids yeah. when it was all said and done. Yeah. Yeah. Single file, of course, <laughs> right on the shoulder. I, I don't know. It was not a school-sponsored event. Right. If, if, if you guys didn't get the email on that one. <laughs> um, Mia? Yeah. Uh, there was, I think, general um, pleasure and and I think positive feeling about that action, the climate change action, the walkout. Um, but some of the veterans of the Vietnam era mentioned um, the, the practice of teach-ins that were common back then, where basically the, um, the regular routine would be broken in order to have a kind of special um, teaching event in which someone from the outside would come in and would um, maybe make a presentation about you know, climate change related topics. So um, I, I just mentioned that in case that's something you want to take to the green team or um, whoever's organizing um, so that you don't, I mean it makes it easier on your, on your shoes. You know? <laughs> and maybe um, you know, also easier to to um, incorporate it into the framework of the school, too. We actually just, I, you may not know, but one of our green team members is preparing um, a, a program to be able to present to kids about uh, climate change and all of that. So that's already in the works for, I think it's after April vacation is when, when that student's going to be doing that. So, so we do have some other things that are happening as a result. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions from you? Thank you very much. Thanks for enjoying the sports. Yeah. Um, so backing up to the beginning, um, I, I forgot to welcome Charles Merriman to the board. Um, do, do you prefer Charles, Charlie? It is fine. I usually go by Charlie. Charlie. Okay. Great. Well, welcome to the board. And, um, and then back to our guests. Thank you very much for being here. Um, are people here for a specific topic or comment? Yes, uh, I was just here to do, uh, represent the math department in the public comment period, whatever okay. that is. Okay. So anybody else? Is this the, is this the math department? 
I, now I'm seeing a connection here. <laughs> um, okay, so we'll, we'll move to agenda revisions. Does anybody have any? And we're on a tight timeline tonight. We've got about 45 minutes left. Okay, so we'll go to public comments. Go ahead, Kit. Thank you for listening. My name is Kit Walker. For those of you that don't know me, I teach Algebra 2 and AP Calculus at U32. I'm here representing the U32 Math Department, here to weigh in on post-cut to the Math White Table funding. I understand the pressures of building a budget, and especially in times of declining enrollment. But we want you to hear the impact of such a cut from your frontline people, the people that are on the ground trying to do what you asked us to do, which is to move our kids up and over that hurdle of the standards we've set. And we're, we're making good progress. Um, but the math white table is a key part of that effort, key. It is used every day, all day long. It's set, staffed by a certified math teacher who doesn't get paid like a teacher. They get paid like a, a para. I actually, I don't know if you know this, but I had that role when I first came to U32. Wonderful job. The best. You just do math all day long. Um, I know, it doesn't sound good to everybody, but to some of us it does, right, Scott? <laughs> so it handles questions from all levels, all courses. Um, consistency in that role, we believe, is incredibly important. The communication that we have through that one person who is constantly fielding all kinds of different issues for different students, I know I can walk in there and say, this is the issue on this quiz for my classes. If my students come in, would you please? And I do it in a split second when I'm heading off to class or I'm coming in from a TA meeting or whatever it is. Um, this consistency in the communication is just so important for the success of our kids. That's what we're talking about. We're not talking about an individual person in that role. We're talking about the program that's been here ever since I've been here, which is 20 years. Proficiency-based learning standards have raised the standards for our students. It incorporates the necessity for extra practice, extra time on task, and reassessments for some students on some topics. But the beauty of it is, is those students can come to Math White Table if they can't find us, because we're teaching somewhere else, and they can sit and they can work on that particular issue that they need. It's, it fits perfectly together. Algebra two students um, are in mixed ability levels, and they have been for the last several years. But unlike geometry and Algebra one, they have no math lab support. So they come through mixed level abilities through Algebra One. If they need extra support, they're in a math lab. They go to geometry. If they need extra support, they go to a math lab. They get to Algebra Two, the support ends. So they're still in mixed level ability classes, you know, 20 ish around, some larger, some a little smaller. Um, but they do not have that math lab support. So that, there again, if you look at the numbers for the math white table, it's heavily Algebra 2. The other key thing about Algebra 2 is that's the graduation standard level. And so it's starting to hit them that to be able to graduate and meet these standards, even though we've been talking about it since the beginning of the year, it's suddenly starting to become real. So the numbers at math white table for Algebra 2 are high. We want to support our kids as best we can. It's not about a specific person in that role. But we really believe strongly, and I don't know if you can tell I'm pretty passionate about this, that having a dedicated person playing that key role is important. I'm not expected to know what's happening all the other departments in the, in the building or all the other needs, and I know they're heavy. I just wanted you to hear directly from us, and the rest of the math department is here, and you can hear from them as well. But thank you for listening. Thank you. Did anyone else want to speak to that or something else? I think it did a very nice job expressing our needs. Um, but also, we'd like to say that, you know, we get that there's, there's things going on with the 
budget and whatnot. And that um, uh, just think it's really important <coughs> to understand that that we're here about the kids and not about anything else. And this is that's we're looking to be here just as, for the support of our for, of our students because we want them to be proficient. Great. <coughs> Um, I just like to say on the behalf of a lot of kids that I know, um, both family, um, friends, and just general peers, that math white table is really, really important to kids and it really helps them um, to be able to, you know, not just for a lot of people, it's just making it by in their classes, it's making proficiencies, but I know a lot of people also utilize it to really work on um, you know, getting beyond that point and really learning how to excel um, just because there's extra support for them. I also find that um, people talking about consistency and there being a dedicated person, I also think that students also find that to be a very important and <coughs> useful um, because um, it takes time to adjust to a teaching style and um, one thing is that kids, when they go from teacher to teacher, you know, and it can change by semester, that sometimes um, kids struggle with that. But if there is one um, particular person at White Table who is there consistently, you know, um, currently it's been like for all of their years in um, high school, that they really know how that works and they're able to adjust to that teaching style and it stays consistent and so that helps them to understand a lot more than if they're always constantly adjusting and so I do think that the consistency like really does help kids and I just want people to know that from conversations that I had with a lot of students and personal experiences myself that it is very important. Thank you. Any, anyone else? Well, we really appreciate you coming, and um, we hear you loud and clear. I, I'm not sure that we'll have time to deliberate about this tonight, um, but the message is received, and of course, um, math is near and dear to our hearts as well, and um, we really appreciate um, everyone's efforts, students and teachers. Thank you. You would like us to come back next time you have a meeting to specifically present anything? any data or imp other information that we have. We know we don't have time for it today, so we didn't prepare it, but yeah, we would be yeah. willing to come back. Well, why don't you give us a chance to talk about that when right. we're planning future agendas. We're okay. just on such a tight timeline tonight. No problem. So. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thanks. Great, well, we'll go back to board reorganization. So um, we'll Thank just move you. through these positions with a little bit of explanation. 2.2 .2 is elective vice chair. Um, that's a role I've had for a little while. There's not too much to it unless the chair is not available and then the vice chair is expected to step in. That's mainly in the, around the meeting. That's the main duty. Um, is anybody, um, are there any nominations? I would, I would nominate Scott. Is there a second? That's it. So George? Okay. Are you willing to accept? Sure. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Any other nominations? Okay, we'll go right to uh, all those in favor of Scott Thompson as vice chair. Say aye. 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 Any opposed or abstention? Okay, congratulations. Thank Thompson. you. Thank you. And clerk, Carl, I believe you've been the clerk. I have been. Yes. Can you describe what, what's involved? <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't tend to be a whole lot. Um, if we don't have if we don't have somebody taking notes, I uh, would fall on the clerk. Right, to, so to get executive clear, session. Coming out of executive yeah. session, I need to make sure to convey what this, you know, what was done convey in executive session to the, the, the uh, folks who write it up. <coughs> okay. okay. And there's usually a little bit of signage sometimes. Yeah. And certain yes, documents. Like certain certain documents to sign clerk. stuff, yeah. The clerk needs to sign. All right. Are there any nominations for the position of clerk? I'll nominate Carl. <laughs> Second, Karen, uh, would you accept the appointment? Uh, yeah, I would. Okay, thank you. Any other nominations? All those in favor of Carl McKee as the clerk, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Abstention? So Carl it is. Thank you, Carl. 2.4, establish the time and day of regular monthly meetings. So, so for the past couple of years, even though we do use sometimes use the third Wednesday, this motion is about the first Wednesday. Doesn't mean you can't have a third Wednesday, but this is kind of the minimum and sets it from there. 
and we did that starting about three, four years ago. So the first Wednesday. Yes. Yeah. Oh, at least I think it's been six years I've been on. It, 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 I remember for a couple of years. I mean, this is my seventh year here. There, where we had both. Okay. Made. Okay. It's just we we both based on the amount. So, so first Wednesday of the month, 6 p.m. right here. Any, uh, or that's the time of day. So moved. Oh, Carl, we'll move that in <laughs> seconds. I'll second that. Any discussion? References for something else? Okay, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed or abstain? Abstain? Okay, so that passes. Establish the newspaper and locations for official posting. So if I give you a recommendation on this as well, um, we use the Times Argus. We'd like to stay with that. We already have some official postings for this year in the Times Argus. Um, so it'd be great to stay there. And while we'll be glad to put it anywhere electronically, it's two physical locations. Uh, we do it at all the elementary schools, but if you just said the central office in here, we do get it out to all the elementary schools and to the others. You okay. can have as many as you want. I just always recommend to boards that you do the two that are required by statute. Please tell us where else you like it. We'll, we'll ensure that it gets there. Okay. Any, uh, someone care to make a motion about that? Uh, I'll move what Bill said. <laughs> <laughs> I'll second. Which would be the Times Argus, <laughs> the Times Argus. elementary schools, and the central office. The central office in U32. Central, central office in U32. And, U32. U32. and the central office will get it to the I would also suggest that it be posted at the town clerk's office too, for those who you know may not uh, school centric. Yeah, right. We can definitely get it there. So, yeah. so is that a friendly amendment? Yeah, absolutely. So that is friendly, it? isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> so, that, that, so Scott's motion. Did someone second? I did. Carl. Carl. Okay. So, further discussion. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Abstain. Okay, so that passes. Now we're up to 2.6, elect a representative and an alternate to the WCSU Executive Committee. This is a role I have served for a little while since, since Conrad passed, I think. So um, what's involved here is an additional monthly meeting, usually, um, representing U32 um, on the Executive Committee, which is a, um, a subcommittee of the SU Board uh, with one representative from each school. We generally plan the next um, um, full board meeting and then we'll, um, we have responsibilities for developing the SU budget, um, uh, sort of shepherding any goals that have been set and progress on, on um, whatever the priorities are for the full board and what else am I leaving out? Is that it, it's really moved to where so much has moved to the SU board Right, because the executive came about three, four years ago, when uh, previously the executive committee only under the WCSU bylaws only has two requirements of the full board, which is the budget and the hiring of the superintendent, and everything else was passed on to the executive committee. Those bylaws haven't changed, but the executive committee has moved it back the other way to go to the SU board. So, I think that's all the official duties right. I sort of described. Um, and I'll say that I, I am interested in continuing to serve in this until, um, until I step down, and partially because I have chaired the School Quality Committee, which is, um, is responsible for working on um, one of the primary goals of the full board, which is how do we you know, um, use our, our student learning outcomes and, and our monitoring of those and planning to improve those to um, advanced education. So that's something that's very important and I'd really like to see that through to, at least to the next step. But if there's, yeah. if there's other interest. So I'll nominate Kari for executive committee. And I'll second. Okay, I think I'll accept that. Are there any other <clears throat> nominations? So all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed to abstention. And then we'll need an alternate. Times I can't make it. Um, has that been Adrian? It was Adrian in the yeah. past. Okay, so we need we need someone to do that. Um, it would just be a matter of me letting that person know if if um, we need, need you to. Sir, and, and what are the times of that? Um, that well, that's to be it's usually it's, 
we ebb and flow from the third Wednesday to the fourth Wednesday, depending if there's an SU meeting. We try to have it on the fourth. When there isn't an SU meeting, when there is, we'd like to have it the week before uh, to plan the SU meeting agendas and plan where we're going, even though that's laid out a little in front. It's at 6, 6 p.m. 6 p.m. At Central Anywhere office. from an hour to two hours. Yeah. Are you interested, Jewish? I can't sign up for something else. Yeah. I, I think my wife is going to end up being on the elementary school board. Oh, and it's going to stretch us real thin. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. A power couple. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Her opposition seems to be pretty thin. <laughs> <laughs> is there anyone interested? Oh, <clears throat> Jonathan, are you interested? I'd nominate you if you're interested. Uh, sure, I'd do it. Okay. Yeah. Great. So we have a nomination. Is there a second, second. for Jonathan? <clears throat> Um, and it, are there any other nominations or interest? I'm happy with Jonathan. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all of those in favor of Jonathan serving as the alternate, uh, say aye. 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 Thank you. Any opposed or abstention? Okay, so, so thank I'll, you, Jonathan. Yes, I'll look to hear from you. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Um, okay, uh, now we need 2.7, elect three voting members to the supervisory union board. So. Supervisory Union Board is all of the members of the uh, six local boards, all 32 of us, um, but per our bylaws, only three 32 members will actually have a vote when there are voting issues. So I believe is one of those two of them. You just, you just two did two of them right now. Oh, we so just did two of them. You just did two of them, okay. so you need a third. So you need a third person. Uh, ideally, that's a person that's committed to attending all of the um, Supervisory Union Board meetings, of which there are five or six, six four to six, depending four on the six year. Four to six per year. Um, is, is anyone interested? I've, I've been the other voting okay. member. Okay. I'm happy to continue. Okay. I nominate Carol. And I'll second. <laughs> All right. Any discussion? <clears throat> All those in favor of Carl as the third voting member say aye. 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 Any opposed? Abstention? Okay. Thank you. So now we're going to move on to 2.8. We're going to elect representatives and alternates to each of the following. And may I suggest something that committees. we've been doing in other boards? Okay. Uh, not knowing where things are, and most of these committees have, are in a bit of a stasis right now. All your fellow boards have been just like electing a representative and not an alternate for okay. each. And I do not know why I didn't see this, but labor management shouldn't be on there. That's not one that we've had. Two okay. or three years. Okay. So that should have been taken off. I think it's just reading old templates of old agendas to produce this. Everybody comfortable with that? That we'll we'll go through the first four and just a single representative, not an alternate this time. Okay. Okay. And I would recommend you just talk about it, make a slate, and go forward. Okay. If people are comfortable with that, we'll just do that. Mm -hmm. All right. So negotiations. Carl, you've been I've involved been in negotiations. Um, and the same thing about it. Okay. <clears throat> Um, you just want to describe it really quickly? Okay. Um, the bulk of that role has been taking part in negotiations, yeah. <laughs> so. which is a real time demand, but is also a very interesting process and very rewarding. So this is uh, negotiations of contracts for teachers contracts and for teachers support staff. And, right, and support staff. Um, and we traditionally, we have been for the last eight, nine years, yeah. we've been using the interest-based bargaining technique. Um, a cool process. It's neat to see, and we've been really happy with the results. Okay. So, um, is there a motion to nominate Carl? Okay. Scott, a second. I'll second. Okay. <coughs> Any other interest or discussion? Oh, um, I, I guess we were going to do this as late. We'll go ahead and do finish this one off. Um, all those in favor of Carl for negotiation, say aye. 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 Opposed abstention. Okay. Thanks, Carl. Uh, transportation. We haven't had, we're in, the, we're in the second year of a five year contract this year. It will roll for the next three years. We haven't had a need for it, but we always have had that committee standing in case there was a transportation issue that we need in the committee. Okay. So we're transportation across the other. <laughs> 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 
Eric was on it. I think you jumped at that one last time. Okay, that sounds like a self nomination. Uh, is there a second to George? I'll second. <laughs> Thank you all. Any other interest in this important role? Okay, um, all those in favor of George say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstention? All right, thanks, George. Um, I guess I'm going out of order here. Policy. Should you go on to the next well, I was, yours? I've been on the policy committee, but it hasn't met, and it's hard for me to get there at 4.30. They're usually at 4.30. Because right. usually been. they happen before another board meeting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's just, it's a difficult time to, for me to make. Um, so if someone else, Is unless it? the time has changed. Is this a monthly? Roughly, meeting? It's yeah, meeting. averaging probably every other month. And it hasn't met for what? Since January. Yeah. So, for several months. Okay. May I just ask if Charlie, if you were interested? Kind of in my daily work. Yeah, kind of is. Sort of makes sense. If you're able sure. to make the timing, yep. I guess you do that. And, and I wouldn't want Scott bringing his vocabulary to the table. That <laughs> 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 Love you dearly, but. <laughs> That's very nice. <laughs> <laughs> Words don't help in policy. <laughs> anyway, um, in that case, well, I I'm, can't promise you that. You're not a bloviator. Excuse me for that. <laughs> but I won't bloviate. I will bloviate. Okay, so I, I'm not going to try. Scott, is there a second? Yeah. I'll second that. Second, Drew. Yeah. Any discussion or other interest in that? All of those in favor of Charlie for policy committee say aye. 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 Opposed abstention. Okay, and then um, uh, I guess we're to labor management. We're we're skipping. School quality. And school. school quality. Okay, so that is a committee, as I described, that's been working on student learning outcomes, monitoring, and planning progress. Uh, as I said, I'm interested in continuing continuing on that. Is it, are we looking at one person? Yeah, from right board? Right okay. Yeah. Um, I would move Kari. And second. Okay, thanks. Any discussion? All those in favor of me for school quality, say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstention? Okay, thanks. All right, so then 2.9, appoint a representative to the Central Vermont Career Center Regional Advisory Board. George, has that been, or Karen? One, it, one, of, you? one of us is it, and one of us is the alternate. I see. And they continually have them at times when others can go. And that's, that's been an ongoing <laughs> frustration. It's like 4.30 yes. on Mondays. Yeah. Can you go? <laughs> I would be very, I, I think this, yeah, I would. I think so. Could you just sort of explain a little bit more about what it is? So the Central, probably you guys can explain yeah. better, the Central yeah. Rock Career Center is our um, technical education for students in our area, and they have their advisory board meets, and you usually, often there's a presentation of one of their programs, and Penny Chamberlain organizes and sends out the information ahead of time. Um, That's Pretty much, it's pretty much it. it. There's there, there, cool. Yeah. There, yeah, and really there actually are yeah. some uh, some pretty substantial decisions that are coming up with the, uh, the career center in the um, next uh, few months. So they're really uh, we, we receive a report in May about um, what their needs are programmatically and physical space. They have a real, they have a real yeah. physical and plan. they're also looking at changing their um, to a full day program. Right. So there's some there's some talk around that and. Um, there's there's several issues. So I mean, if we need to be. I guess the m moral of the story is we need representation on this. Right. Like and, that's, and I would just say that it is advisory. The the uh, Spalding board and now the new Barry Merge board will have uh, school district board will have has the governance authority over mm -hmm. the tech mm -hmm. center. So it's, it right. is that advisory is a key word mm -hmm. in right. there. And I feel compelled cool. to mention cool. yeah. that we're yeah. facing a, what is it, 11 percent tuition? Yeah. I think it's around 10, 10 percent. Right a stiff yeah. increase um, yeah. for next yeah. year or so. Yeah. Down from the initial number that we that were yeah. 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 <laughs> Still interested? Absolutely. Okay, is there a motion for Charlie to um, move forward? Scott? Second. Second. Any discussion? <clears throat> All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed abstention? Okay, thank you. The point of truance officer. We recommend you the dean of students. I'd recommend they use the position and not the title. I do that with every. Okay, and that has been the case for many years. Yeah, yes. Yeah. Okay, is, is there a motion? I'll move it. I'll second. Okay, any discussion? I wonder to if there might be a chance to revisit if there, um, 
and maybe it will happen if there is a merged district piece, but there are new truancy right. process procedures that we, I emailed out this week and the elementary schools have been sending out, and I read somewhere something about a homeschool coordinator maybe for our district, so it might be something that we merge. I think it was something we could do in another yeah. time if we need to, but for right so now. So we can set it, it now and then if we could come back and discuss it if we, it if we need to. If we need to. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, thank you. All right, establish a youth or two board finance and facilities slash capital budget committee membership. So this board, uh, committee generally meets in advance of the U32 budget process or in conjunction with that. And through it, and sometimes yeah. we have you once in the spring for capital pieces. So mm -hmm. it's it's definitely sort of intermittent, um, plays an important role in sort of um, getting getting the ball rolling. If we're going to do a forum, you know, the committee would be responsible for sort of putting that together, um, what information that we're going to present to the to the community. So I've been on this committee, Scott, mm -hmm. Karen. Um, I've given my timing. I'm I'm I think I'm not interested in being on this committee going forward. So um, I still have. okay. So, I'd still do it. Okay. And is anyone else interested in this? Because an insight into the budget making? <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to come to terms with it. <laughs> I think we can operate with two if you guys are comfortable with that. We've had some years where that's sort of never the case. Okay. I mean, it's great advice to Stephen, myself, and Mario because we all are at those meetings. Yeah. Okay. So I would Wait, I'm sorry, was there meant to be three board members? Three oh, members of it? Well, there has been at times, but we can operate with I think it was because I elbowed my way onto it. <laughs> <laughs> so I would take a motion for Karen and Scott to the Finance Committee. I'll make that motion. Carl and... Second. Second, Jonathan. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Abstention? Okay, thank you. And then finally, appoint member to the transition board. Okay, so uh, that we've had Carl, right, as our clerk. You were appointed. He yeah. Still s yeah. served on that. Right. That's and correct. then Adrian was. Right. That's the chair. Yeah. And now we're, it doesn't have to be the chair, it can be. It can be whoever you like, uh, but the transition with Adrian. Um, on the board anymore, and according to check this out with Chris Leopold, um, the board needs to reappoint a member. It yep. needs to be uh, his opinion member. that it's a it's a standing uh, school board member that's on the transition board. And uh, is there a meeting scheduled or there's a schedule of meetings? We, I I propose <laughs> <that we're laughs> not here, but uh, it really is going to be determined after April eighth. Okay. I just put those, and I, those are the, the, and please take that possible as a big piece there. It's, uh, I just threw those down trying to think about the workload. Okay. Yeah, and it that. could be something very different depending on what that group is. So, so remind us the responsibility of the transition board is to develop the, the, the unified budget? The unified budget to warn for and ensure the election, well, more, more of the town clerks do that, but to warn the election for the uh, merge board members and to communicate that out okay. to folks. I'd be willing to do that. I, uh, this, I don't have a burning passion for it, but I, I'm happy to serve if you I'd, like well, to. I'd nominate Scott. Scott well, are you interested? Uh, Charlie. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I blast. I actually <laughs> am interested in it. Okay. Um, just because it's gotten a lot more, a lot more like a bucking bronco. Um, and I'm, you know, just a natural rodeo clown. Yep. So, um, Are you the barrel man? I'm, I'm <laughs> that's, that's even better still. I show my broken bones. <laughs> um, but, you know, I... I like I said, I'm not, I'm not dying to do it. Yeah. I have a perverse sense of fun. Well, then I'm going to nominate you. <laughs> and also, he did. He did. did. Okay, I'm second. second. Okay, any discussion? Anyone else interested? Okay, uh, all those in favor? Um, Scott, uh, for the transition board, say aye. 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 Any opposed abstention? Okay. 
Thank you very much. So we'll move on to the consent agenda. Is there a motion to approve the minutes of March 4th and 6th that are in the packet? So moved. Okay. Second? Is there a second? Sure. Second. Um, Carl. Okay, any discussion? I just want to mention that I'm abstaining from all that because I was on the board. So. Okay. Any other comments? Okay, that's good. That's good. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? We've got <clears throat> one abstention. <clears throat> okay. Great. So let's move on to 4.1. We've got time check 15 minutes left. I think we have time to, to cover at least these next two. Yeah, I think many of the reports yeah, can be wait. pretty basic. You know, frankly, uh, there's uh, 4.2 and 6.1 are things we need to get through. Okay. I'll explain more about 6.1. So I don't know that we've established norms um, in recent history for the E32 board, but I thought it might be a good reorganization um, topic, and so I suggested including the SU board norms um, in just for discussion purposes um, in the packet. So hopefully people had a chance to look at those and you're probably already familiar. Um, so I guess the first question is: Is there interest in adopting our own set of norms for these? I have that interest. I think that's a great idea. It's kind of like having the yeah. mission and vision of an organization at the beginning of a meeting. To me, it just sort of sets a tone. And if I read something like this when I'm reading a meeting packet before I go in, I'm just in the right frame of mind for. Um, yeah, and I, I believe these norms are always right front and center in the packet of the. Of the the SU. Yes, they are. Do people generally agree with that? Or any, anybody yeah. be uncomfortable with adopting norms? I am. <clears throat> you are? Yeah, I, I don't, it, just because I don't know what their status is, as each of us being elected officials, um, I, I, don't, I don't have any quibble with any of the uh, statements on the norms. I just don't know quite what their, uh, I don't quite know what purpose they serve. Um, since they, to the extent that they, you know, the, the war with our duties as elected official um, at any given time, the norms would have to give way to uh, our duties as elected officials. Hmm. So, uh, so I guess to, to s summarize, I'm, I'm happy to go forward with it, uh, but um, I take these as uh, aspirational. Yeah. 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 Any other thoughts on? If or whether to move forward. If okay, so um, so how do people feel about these these norms? I mean, do, you, do you feel comfortable? You want to talk about them? You want to spend time going through them? I actually have some questions. Then I looked at them again. <laughs> I've always been under the assumption that these were the norms that we were using mm. um, because they were always part of. Um, the broader SU yeah, meeting. Point. I guess that's a poor assumption. So, so for you, they're, they're already kind of baked in. Other thoughts? Uh, I, I agree with George. That's, that was basically my assumption, too. Okay. My experience has been that there hasn't been a ton of whipping out and slamming Robert's rules of order down on the table. And these are sort of why is because we've, um, and, and a lot of meetings have progressed where people are sort of only doing that if they really have to. So I think that's, there, I do have a few questions on them too. What was your yeah. question? Um, well, right off the bat, the very first one, communicate to the public about public comment. <laughs> Can someone remind me what that actually means? <laughs> When we take public comments during our meetings, we're going to share those with the broader public? I meetings. actually think it was more if you receive a public comment, you bring uh, it back, you bring it back to the board. Board. Got it. Uh, Got okay. it. That needs to be yeah. clarified. But I think okay. that was the intent, if I'm remembering back to the discussion. Communicate to the public about public comments. So I, I mean, it's more communicate to the, to the board. board. Oh. About, yeah, OK, that makes sense. Are people comfortable with that? As a, make that, change. that makes more sense. Yeah. Clarification. And that's like when any of us have gotten an email and we've shared it and said, I, someone emailed me and shared this concern. Um, the third bullet, uh, start and end on time. This meeting has not generally had end times 
for agenda items or the meeting overall. And I'm wondering if people feel compelled to add those. So. And the SU has that because often there's meetings after. Right, right. So there's more of a time. I, I think it's a nice, it's an aspirational list. I think it's a nice <laughs> thing to have on the list, okay. but I think we as a group recognize there will be times when well, in, in that in that spirit, would it make more sense to say a timekeeper keep, may be named? Yeah. yeah. Since we've never done it before, or yeah. had no mm -hmm. um, Let's see. Uh, getting near the bottom, announcements and reports. Adma announcements from the administration will appear in the reports and not as discussion items. To that, I would add, to the extent feasible, um, because we don't want to be um, excluded from the latest and greatest information. If it didn't have time to make it to the... You can tell us if we've been doing too much verbally or not enough. Written. How about that? <laughs> more written, less verbal. More verbal, less written. <laughs> uh, personally, I I really like written because then we can go to the next level in the discussion. Not not the. But I agree. Other, other thoughts. So, so I, I would just suggest adding to the extent feasible. Because I don't, I don't think, I mean, if you learn something today, I would like to hear about it if you think we should know. And let's see, the role of the board. At the end of each board meeting, reflect on whether the board stayed at a high level throughout the meeting to ensure alignment with the goal of not spending time in the weeds. This, I don't think this has been our practice, so I'm certainly open to it, but I just want to recognize it. I don't think it's been the practice of the SU board either, so it's truly been aspirational. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But I do think we do a reasonably good job deciding when we're going to go into the weeds. Yeah. You know, if it's a night where it just doesn't fit, we don't let ourselves do it. Okay. Right. Okay. So those are my questions. Did we good cover yours? Yeah, exactly. I'm curious about what the three before me is. I can tell you because it comes from an uh, educational world. Yeah. It's a common statement that when you're having a meeting, like you could say something, and I can't. We can't get them you back and forth. Wait for other people. people comments come before. I figured it was something like that. So. Yeah. Don't 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 dominate, don't dominate the, the table. table. Does anybody want to suggest an addition? The only thing that I would suggest is I think the role of the board um, numbers. Second to last is a little bit too colloquial. I think uh, the role of the board is sort of like central to our function, and having a clear understanding of what our role is, I think, should be better explicated than that. So I, um, I'll, I'll try to work something up, or I won't. Okay. <laughs> but, you know, okay. I just wanted to. That's that's. Yeah. Like, yeah the board. Important. It's not right. Yeah. It's, it's not, not right quite the right title. Right. Title, title for it. No, it's yeah. not. It's not the right title. Because there's there if we just go to the work that we've seen in VSBA and that's one of many places of good roles of boards. Um, it's right. a lot more than that. Right. So I think Charlie's on. Yeah, it's more like it's operational something. detail or something like that. Right. Uh, by the way, is there going to be an orientation for our new board member? Is that standard uh, practice? I have not had a chance to talk with Matthew, and we haven't had one in the past year and a half. For oh, some okay. Board members. So I'll talk with Matthew about that. Okay. It's usually the, the the SU board chair runs out with the support of other board members from around the district. So I just don't know. I'll keep Charlie in the lead. Okay. Exactly. All right. So are we comfortable adopting these as is pending uh, Charlie brings us pending a couple changes? Yeah, I have some. I've been taking some notes. So. Okay. Well, why don't you? Um, Would you like me to do some mark, mark it up? Mark it up and if you come up with something before the next meeting, I want to change the title. I think. Honestly, sure. I, honestly, I truly think that that. Uh, thank you for offering that, but I think that is a, a function of the board as opposed to uh, the superintendent. Um, why don't uh, you know? Since I opened my big fat mouth, why don't you let me take it this way? Okay. And and you got notes on the things that we. That we were well, reading. I didn't take as clear notes as I should have, but I think I've got it in mind. Okay. Bill can give you his notes. That's good, yeah. <laughs> um, I'll double check with Bill. I was, okay. I was taking notes, too. Charlie. All right, so we're going to leave it with, uh, Charlie's going to update this draft, and, and we'll consider it next time. All right. 4.2 is the track project. Bill, you're going to bring us some information. Right, I, I had a chance to talk to Du Bois uh, construct, 
construction. Um, they, as you know, last time I informed you that they gave us an extra 30 days because we hadn't had a budget vote. When I talked with their project manager, he was willing to give us to the 10th to see what the outcome of the budget was okay. to notify them for if we're going forward or not. So I think it made it less of a pressing discussion tonight. Um, you know, as we said, if we don't have a budget, we may want to be looking at that money for other uses in case we don't have a budget in that, that piece. Oh. It's a it's it's about it's about a track. Yeah. yeah, I thought it was about having the parallel track. So no, 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 no. It's no. literally, it's literally, it's literally a track track project. 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 construction project that if for some reason we needed to go to cash reserves, yeah. I'm not sure if okay. I could recommend to you as a board to sign on to it. Yeah. So so for now we're covered in the scenario where the U32 budget is approved and you feel comfortable as a board going forward. It, in, in the event that there is a um, a delay in merger, yeah. if there's not a delay in merger, and, so you, we, and we don't have a unified budget for some reason, then we've got bigger problems than the draft. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah. Um, so, and those are the scenarios, right? Those are the scenarios. You've got them. Um, any questions? All right, so more to come, um, but not until after the night. Can I suggest, um, because of time, Curry, yeah. that we postpone the reports to the board and we go to the action agenda so I can inform you of whether you, before you even put a motion on the table about what this is about. Sure, let's, is everyone comfortable with that? Yeah. Sure. Okay, let's move to 6.1 then. Um, so approved reductions of force, uh, according to the master agreement you have with both your ESP association and your teachers association, the board needs to approve reductions in force by April 1st and notify them of that. Um, so in the budget that you have, that you approved, there were seven positions to be reduced. Um, and Stephen could give us some more detail on what those positions are, uh, but those are pieces that we're in all the ESP positions. Mm -hmm. And I'm assuming one of them is the white table. The math white table is one of those positions. Mm -hmm. Along with um, one food service employee and um, five, five uh, paraprofessional um, positions. Um, we also had uh, an additional paraprofessional position that was supposed to come here, but we are not choosing to fill that. So, so in all total, it's eight positions, but only seven people will need to be uh, ripped as a result of this. Stephen, that um, the white table, is that a, 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 a kit indicated it was a para position, is that right? So the, the position is, um, it's called academic support, but it's akin to a paraprofessional position. But um, in the past, uh, the past two, maybe, well, maybe even longer, probably the past three or four uh, people that have staffed that position have been retired uh, math oh, teachers. okay. Yeah. You, will you comment on the uh, impact on student learning outcomes? Uh, yeah, um, so it's, uh, we have a bigger issue. Like, so I, I, I mean, I, I'm not hesitating because of that. There, there's a lot that's wrapped up in this. Um, currently, our supports for students um, who are struggling in math start in seventh grade um, with math strategies. So students who take seventh grade math who are struggling will also have a full course in math strategies. Um, that same um, support is there in the eighth grade, and then as they transition to high school, we have what's called uh, an algebra lab, or uh, and then in tenth grade a geometry lab um, for students who struggle with algebra and geometry. So they essentially have two courses of math available to them: one being the primary instruction, the the other one being their tier two intervention. Um, then when they reach their Algebra 2 level, there is no Algebra 2 lab that's associated with that. What we see is that the, um, the, the data that the teachers didn't bring to share, but they have shared with me, um, is that 53% of the kids who go to the white table are Algebra 2 students. 
um, in, in terms of means, and there are multiple times. So there were 988 visits so far this year of just out for two students to the white team. Um, some of that is for reassessment. Um, in fact, that's one of the big pieces that they report that students are there, but some of it is to relearn or to learn um, math material. So, so they go to, to the table to do that. We are not calling for an elimination of math white table. And I think that that's something mm -hmm. that we, we need to kind of clarify <coughs> is that we're looking to staff it with the teachers as part of their duty or assignments, <coughs> depending on how we structure the math department. So we are early in proposal on this. So the, one of the ideas that was thrown out, and we don't even know if it'll work. So th this is just the earliest idea phase, is that what if one of the teachers taught two classes on, say, a blue day, and then um, the, um, that same teacher covered the math white table on the white day, right? So using the current staffing that we have to help cover the table. We're not 100% sure that we can cover every block every day um, of a week because um, we don't necessarily have enough teachers to do that and their assignments are, are difficult as, on top of that. I would also say we've been asked by the math department as well for an increase in the number of the lab classes. So going from three lab classes this year to four algebra lab classes next year, and from two geometry lab classes this year to three next year. So the level of tier two interventions are increasing as well. Um, we have budgetarily, you will see in the math department that um, Oh, I guess you guys probably don't have the numbers in front of you, but there was an increase, uh, a, a moderate increase um, to, the, uh, to the math department, but it was because we've actually added FTEs to the math department because in addition to covering these more intervention courses, we also are covering, um, one teacher is being used for the Zenith program, which is our alternative um, education program um, that we have with our special education services. So we've already added math teachers to that. Um, so there's a lot, it's, it's a lot of balls in the air. So to answer your SLO question, um, you know, we, I feel um, that the math department will need to cover those needs within the math department. So for reassessment and for reteaching and for those kinds of things, we need to work out within the department how to do those things. I would remind the board over the past four years, we eliminated the science. Um, uh, we had a person who was in the science lab who uh, we reduced uh, four years ago, I believe it was. Um, and we worked with the teachers to restructure their schedule so that they could um, cover that as part of their duty and part of their assignment. Um, we removed the blue, what was called the blue table for writing instruction. Our English teachers then um, changed the structure of their classes. So they went from five teaching classes to four by increasing their class sizes and then conferencing with kids um, for the writing piece. We asked our middle school teachers to uh, teach five classes. They were only teaching four previously. And this last year, we asked them two years ago, we asked them to, uh, to teach five so that they were teaching the intervention blocks in the middle school instead of us having a math intervention or a reading intervention specific person in the middle school. It was the English and math teachers, um, actually one of our social studies teachers that um, teaches one of the reading classes as well. So we've been making this through all the departments. We've been having these changes as we come. I mean, I, I hate to say that it's math's turn, but it's where we're at now. You know, it's the, it's kind of the progression of how do we reduce our overall FTEs outside of the teaching force, and that's the reduction in paras and academic support in favor of having the licensed teachers there. I think the interesting thing about the math piece is that it has been a retired teacher, and so that's been an, an mm -hmm. advantage within that program, is that they've had that advantage of having a retired math teacher in there. Where in some of these other positions, that was not true. We did not have like a retired science teacher in the science lab and things like that. So, so that's that's been the 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 biggest. I, I think that's one of the bigger issues to it. But we are asking our teachers to um, to take on the responsibilities of intervention and math table uh, white table is one of those interventions that we had. Um, and so that's that's kind of where we stand. Does it? 
prevent our kids from meeting their SLOs, it's hard to say that the math white table was helping them. Like, we don't really have the data to show that either way that I know of. Um, and so I, I believe in our math department. I know that it's, a, it's painful at first, but all of our other um, changes that we've made have, once we've gotten through the initial shock, our teachers have stepped up. Our teachers are excellent, and, and they will be able to step up. I think there's ways for us to address the consistency piece that they really, that's one of the chief concerns, um, by trying to not have it as a rotation of teachers, but can we restructure some of the teaching schedules so that a teacher can cover multiple blocks of time. All right, well, we're over time. In, in the interest of, of moving this along, um, I'm sure we could discuss it for quite a while. Um, you're seeking approval of a um, reduction of force of seven. Right. Correct. And this and it, this is time sensitive because these need to be issued by April 1st. Correct. We won't meet again before that. Right. Can, can I just add on top? I, I need to add one more piece is that currently we have um, within the school, our schedules have been created, our first draft of them. We're still 0.6 short in terms of all the interventions that we need to um, cover. So I'm still short teaching staff to cover the courses that we have right now. Uh, particularly with reading um, is one of the areas that we have, and Lit, lit Lab, um, which is another intervention program on that side. So there's a, there's a lot. I mean, I know that we're, we're kind of rushed for time, but there's certainly a lot happening in terms of what we need as a school right now, even given our budget reduction. Okay. So. So, um, would anyone like to make a motion? I'll move it. Scott? I'll second. As much as it breaks my heart, but yeah. it's the direction mm -hmm. we're going. Right. We have to right size the school over in the next decade. And, and, and it's not, it's not, um, it's not a teaching position. It's yeah. in support. Yeah. Uh, further discussion? Uh, I'm going to support it, not because I understand the issue, but because I think this falls squarely in the, in the area of, of our administration and I defer to their judgment on it. Any other comments? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstention? <coughs> okay, that passes. Yeah. I will move that we approve the board order for $78,000 $459.20 for the period of March 7th through March 20th. And second. Second from Scott. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed abstention? That carries. And lastly, um, board communication. Yeah. 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 Because Mary Shelsey volunteered <laughs> this. Didn't do, didn't do last time. Wearing sackcloth and ashes the whole way. Um, so we'll shoot to get something together by, uh, by early next week. Oh, I was going to say, okay, <laughs> by tomorrow. Great. Um, okay, so I would entertain a motion to adjourn for a student no, 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 hearing. No, 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 no. Not to adjourn. Oh, to move into executive session. Yes, <laughs> first <laughs> <laughs> <It's burned, laughs> <It's burned laughs> <burned. laughs> I would ask. Hold on a second. Before you do that vote. Um, you asked for the protocol that we use for student hearings, so I brought a copy of that. Okay. I also brought some questions that you've asked for before for us to prep you with, so okay. you're ready for a student hearing. Great. I'll let you pass that out. If you want a few minutes, the administration, we can step out if you'd like to discuss that as a board before you get ready for the hearing. Um, I, I just give you that moment. Yeah. Does anybody want extra time just to prepare? Uh, okay. Charlie, I'm my... I'm uh, but but Charlie is a is an attorney, so he's <laughs> <laughs> All right, so um, I would entertain a motion to move into executive session for a student hearing. So moved. Jonathan, a second. I'll, I'll second that. Thank you. Okay, so uh, seven seven oh no six. Say aye, please. Aye. 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 Quickly Any opposed? Okay, seven oh six. For the purpose of student.